Hello children, here is a poem for you and the name of this poem is The Frog and the Nightingale. The poet's name is Vikram Set. Here you can see, I have this image for you. This is a nightingale and this is a frog. Let us go ahead, I will tell you something about the poet Vikram Set also. Vikram Seth, he is an Indian novelist and poet. Till now he has published six books of poetry and three novels. His most prominent work is the book titled A Suitable Boy. Here you can see this is the book A Suitable Boy and this particular poem The Frog and the Nightingale has been taken from his book an anthology of poems titled Beastly Tales. So as you can see from the title Beastly Tales it is all about different beasts, different animals. So Vikram Seth has made an anthology of poems that is a collection of poems which is based on different animals. And here we have this particular poem for you titled the frog and the nightingale. Let us go ahead. I have the difficult words from the poem. The first word is bog. Bog means an area of land that is very wet and muddy. Here you can see this related image. Here is a pond and this area is a bog. The next word is a W N on. Now you can see here it is misspelled otherwise it is O N on. So A W N on is O N on misspelled and mispronounced so that it rhymes with dawn. So basically A W N on is used by the poet in order to create rhyme with dawn. The next word is loathed means hated. The next difficult word is crass. It means rude and insensitive. Cacophony. This is a very loud and unpleasant noise. Minstreled means sang. Here you can see in this image the frog is singing. The next word is elation. It means great pride and joy. Let us go ahead. The next word is loon. It is a large water bird. Here you can see this bird is called a loon. Further the next word is serenaded which means sang beautifully. Teal is a small duck. This image is that of a teal. Enraptured means filled with fascination and delight. Sash. Sash is a long piece of cloth that you wear round the waist or over the shoulder usually as a badge of honor. Here you can see in this image this ribbon, this blue black and green mix colored ribbon is a sash. The next word is scale which is a sequence of musical notes that go up and down one after the other. Here you can see the movement of the lines they are going up and down. This is called a musical scale. The next difficult word is hoarse which means rough and unclear. Quivering means shaking, trembling. The next word is subdued which means quiet with little energy. Tiara. Tiara is a semicircular metal band decorated with jewels and worn by wealthy women on formal occasions. Here you can see this image. This is a tiara. The next word is wrapped which means totally interesting. 
so that you cannot think of anything else. Heron is a water bird. This is a heron. The next word is dumbstruck which means so shocked or surprised as to be unable to speak. Solitary means existing alone. Tiddler is a small fish. Here you can see these small fishes. These are tiddlers. The next word is twitched which means a shot, sudden jerk or movement. Critic is a person who judges the merits of artistic works. Panache Panache means a very confident, elegant style. Waded means to walk in water. Here you can see in this image, this person is walking in water. So you can say that he is wading. The next difficult word is foghorn which means a very loud, unpleasant noise. Casting forth means to emit or to send out. The next word is adoration which means strong admiration. Sensation is a widespread reaction of interest and excitement. Mid-flight means during a flight. Here you can see this image. The aeroplane is taking off. So we can say that this aeroplane is mid-flight. Precision means being exact and accurate. The next word is trills. Trills means singing two musical notes one after the other repeatedly and very quickly. The next word is billings which means publicity for a concert, show etc. Zipped means sang quickly. Morose means miserable, bad tempered. The next word is encore which means that you ask someone to sing more. Baritone is a male singing voice which is fairly deep. Technique is a method of doing something. Flushed means very excited and pleased. Now let us go ahead and see the poem. I'll read it out to you. Once upon a time a frog croaked away in bingle bog. Every night from dusk to dawn he croaked on and on and on. Now here let us see first of all the poet says once upon a time a frog. So here the poet has introduced the first beast, the first creature in his poem that is this frog. And then further the poet says croaked away in bingle bog. Now croaked here, this is the typical sound which is made by the frog. Now here the poet has used this word croaked which is the peculiar sound made by the frog. Using such words in poetry is called onmatpia. This is a poetic device which is generally used to magnify the mood of the poem. Let us go ahead. The poet says, croaked away in bingle bog. Now what is this bingle bog? This is the name of this particular bog where the frog lived. Every night from dusk to dawn. So the poet is saying that from evening till morning. Dusk is the time when sunset is taking place. And dawn is the time when sunrise is taking place. So from sunset till sunrise. Every night means all through the night. He croaked on and on and on. The poet is using on three times. He is repeating this word on and using repetition is also a poetic device 
and it is used to lay emphasis on something. The poet is trying to tell us that the frog croaked non-stop, continuously all through the night. Let us go ahead and read the next stanza. Other creatures loathed his voice, but alas, they had no choice. And the crass cacophony blared out from the sumac tree, at whose foot the frog each night minstreled on till morning night. Now here the poet has introduced the next creatures in the poem. These are these other creatures who live in the bingle bog. So these other creatures can be animals like monkeys, rabbits, ducks, birds etc. who live in this bingle bog. Now these other creatures hated the voice of this frog. They hated this croaking sound that this frog made all through the night. But they had no choice. Now why didn't they have any choice? Because they had to live there in the same area that is the bingle bog. And so they had to listen to the sound which the frog made all through the night. And the crass cacophony. Now crass cacophony means some rude and insensitive sound. And this rude and insensitive sound is this noise which is made by the frog. This sound blared out from the sumac tree. Blared out from the sumac tree. Sumac tree is a particular tree beneath which the frog lived. And he sang from there all through the night. At whose foot the frog each night minstreled on till morning night. So the frog sang all through the night. It croaked continuously. Let us go ahead. The poet says, Neither stones, nor prayers, nor sticks, insults or complaints or bricks stilled the frog's determination to display his heart's elation. Now here the poet says that various ways were tried to stop the frog from croaking all through the night. But these ways of using stones, prayers, sticks, insults, complaints and bricks None of them worked. None of them stopped him from croaking all through the night. They were not able to stop the frog's determination. The frog was so determined, he had such strong willpower that he went on singing all through the night. To display his heart's elation. Heart's elation means that by singing, the frog was displaying his happiness. He was very proud that he was singing so well. Actually, that is what the frog thought that the frog was singing. And no one could stop the frog from displaying his happiness. But one night, a nightingale, in the moonlight, cold and pale, Perched upon the sumac tree, casting forth her melody. Now in this stanza, the poet has introduced the next creature in the poem. This is a new entrant in the bingle bog and it is a nightingale. This is a very cute little bird and the bird was singing in the moonlight, cold and pale. The poet has described the moonlight as being cold and pale. Pale means something which is colorless. So the poet says that the sky was lit by the moonlight. And at that time perched upon the sumac tree. Now this sumac tree is the same tree which is the home of the frog. 
beneath this particular sumac tree the frog used to sing all through the night and now this nightingale she came and sat upon the sumac tree casting forth her melody this means that the nightingale brought out her melodious voice by singing songs further the poet says dumbstruck sat the gaping frog and the whole admiring bog stared towards the sumac wrapped and when she had ended clapped ducks had swum and herons waded to her as she serenaded now here the poet says dumbstruck the frog was shocked why was he shocked he was shocked to hear the voice of this bird sat the gaping frog now gaping means that the frog was staring at the nightingale with its mouth wide open and the whole admiring bog now here the poet is saying that the entire bengal bog all the animals in the bengal bog they admired they liked the voice of this nightingale and they stared towards the sumac tree they all stared at the nightingale they looked towards the sumac tree upon which the nightingale sat and the nightingale was singing pleasant melodious songs wrapped wrap means that all the animals in the bengal bog were fascinated they were completely absorbed in listening to the nightingale and when she had ended they clapped ducks had swum and herons waded so here the poet is saying that ducks and herons which live in the water they also swam towards the nightingale to hear her melodious voice as she serenaded so as she sang and a solitary loon wept beneath the summer moon toads and teals and tiddlers captured by her voice cheered on enraptured bravo to divine and core here the poet is saying that a solitary loon solitary means something which is lonely and loon is a large water bird so a lonely large water bird it wept beneath the summer moon it was so moved by the nightingale's melodious voice and it was lonely also so this loon started weeping further the poet says toads and teals and tiddlers now here the poet has used alliteration as a poetic device alliteration means that he is repeating this first consonant sound here in this particular alliteration the sound is t toads and teals and tiddlers what the poet is saying that these are various kinds of creatures which lived in the bengal bog and all of them were captured they were captured by the melodious voice of the nightingale they cheered her and they said bravo to divine encore encore means that they asked the nightingale to sing once more let us go ahead so the nightingale once more quite unused to such applause sang till dawn without a pause next night when the nightingale shook her head and twitched her tail closed an eye and fluffed a wing and had cleared her throat to sing 
here the poet says the nightingale once more so she started singing once again because it was quite unused to such applause the nightingale had never before got such praise and attention as she had got now from the creatures in the bingal bog so it sang till dawn without a pause so this nightingale sang continuously all through the night next night when the nightingale shook her head and twitched her tail closed an eye and fluffed a wing and had cleared her throat to sing now what is this what is the nightingale doing it is preparing to sing again so the poet is saying that the next night again the nightingale is preparing herself to sing once again let us go ahead to see what happens next she was startled by a croak sorry was that you who spoke she inquired when the frog hopped towards her from the bog yes the frog replied now here the poet says she was startled by a croak again the poet has used this peculiar sound which is made by the frog the frog has appeared and interrupted the bird with his peculiar croaking sound the nightingale politely asks the frog that was it the frog who spoke the frog hopped towards the nightingale and said that yes the frog was the one who had croaked you see i am the frog who owns this tree in this bog i have long been known for my splendid baritone and of course i wield my pen for bog trumpet now and then now here the frog is introducing itself to the nightingale the frog says that i am the frog who owns this tree here you can see students that the frog is so dominating although it merely lives beneath the sumac tree it says that it actually owns the tree further the frog says in this bog i have long been known for what for my splendid baritone now splendid baritone means something which is very extremely beautiful so the frog says that his voice baritone means his male voice is extremely beautiful and very impressive further the frog says of course i wield my pen for bog trumpet now and then so the frog says that it is also a writer and it writes for the bog's periodical which is called the bog trumpet further the poet says did you did you like my song not too bad but far too long the technique was fine of course but it lacked a certain force oh the nightingale confessed now here first of all the nightingale is asking the frog so the bird lacks confidence and is so foolish that she believes all that the frog tells her about himself and so she asks the frog that did the frog like her song now the frog replies not too bad but far too long so the frog is presenting itself to be a highly trained musician and that is why the frog is finding faults in the bird's singing then the frog says that the technique of singing was fine but your voice was not very forceful and on this reply the nightingale says oh so 
what the nightingale is doing the nightingale is being so foolish that it is believing all what the frog is saying and it is feeling guilty for making mistakes in her singing let us go ahead greatly flattered and impressed that a critic of such note had discussed her art and throat i don't think the songs divine but oh well at least it's mine so here the nightingale is very innocent it is getting trapped in the trick of the clever frog it is very flattered and impressed now why is this nightingale flattered and impressed because it is thinking that a critic critic is some person who analyzes a thing anything here the frog is a critic he has analyzed the singing talent of this nightingale the nightingale is very impressed it is very flattered because the frog who is a well known musician has taken out the flaws in her singing has pinpointed the flaws in the nightingale's singing further the poet says her art and throat now art here means her singing talent and throat refers to her voice so the nightingale replies i don't think the songs divine but oh well at least it's mine so this nightingale humbly accepts that her song is not very good but still it is satisfied because the song is her own creation further the poet says that's not much to boast about said the heartless frog without proper training such as i and few others can supply you will remain a mere beginner but with me you will be a winner so here first of all the frog scolds the bird because she was being boastful the frog feels that when the nightingale said that she was happy that the song was her own composition she was being boastful said the heartless frog now he was heartless because he was scolding this little innocent bird then the frog says without proper training such as i and few others can supply so the frog says to the bird that the bird needs proper musical training she needs to be trained in music and without that training she will just remain a beginner she will not become a trained singer but with me you will be a winner so the frog says that if the nightingale wants to become a winner so winner means that if she wants to become a trained singer she needs to collaborate with the frog dearest frog the nightingale breath this is a fairy tale and you are mozart in disguise come to earth before my eyes now here you can see that the nightingale is highly impressed by the frog she requests the frog she says that this is a fairy tale what is this learning music from the frog is a fairy tale for the nightingale it is a dream come true for her and you are mozart in disguise now mozart was a very great musician and the nightingale is comparing the frog to mozart come to earth before my eyes so the nightingale is requesting the soul of mozart who is living in the frog right now to appear in front of her well i charge a modest fee oh but it won't hurt you will see now the nightingale inspired 
flushed with confidence and fired with both art and adoration, sang and was a huge sensation. Now here the frog tells the nightingale that it will charge a modest fee. Modest means that it is not a very huge amount but if the nightingale wants to learn music from the frog it has to pay a fee to the frog. The frog says that it won't hurt because the amount will not be very much, it will be quite less and it will not be a burden for the nightingale. Now the nightingale inspired. Now once the frog gives the consent to the nightingale that he will teach her singing, this was a motivation for the bird. The bird was inspired. It was flushed with confidence and fired with both art and adoration. Here the poet has again used alliteration to repeat the R sound, art and adoration. Sang and was a huge sensation. So here the poet says that as the nightingale was full of confidence, and it was inspired by the consent of the frog. It sang all through the night and it got lots of praise from the audience. It became a huge sensation. Animals from miles around flocked towards the magic sound. And the frog with great precision counted heads and charged admission. Though next morning it was raining, he began her vocal training. Now here, what is happening? Animals from miles around flocked towards the magic sound. The magic sound is the magical voice of the nightingale. It was magical because it attracted animals from far and wide. All these animals came to listen to her voice. And what was the frog doing? The frog with great precision. Great precision is that the frog was very careful. And he was careful in doing what? In counting heads and charging admission. So the frog was very careful not to miss out on any person who came to listen to the singing of the nightingale. He counted all the people and charged admission. So the frog was doing business. He was charging an entry fee from all the creatures who attended the concert. Now this is a concert because... The nightingale is singing in its melodious voice and it is magical. It has attracted animals from miles away who have come to just hear her melodious voice. Though next morning it was raining and still the frog started training the bird although it was raining.